Hey everyone, it's Mr. Wobbly94. I hope you're doing well today. I have a book review for you for a very complicated to explain book. This book would be House of Leaves by Mark Z. Danielewski. You've probably heard about this book. I think it came out around 2000 or so. It's what the copyright says on the inside of my book, but it feels like there's different editions of this, the way it seems to talk on the front of the book. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe this is the only version of the book that's ever existed. I don't know, but it's a very complicated book. It's going to be complicated to explain. I hope you'll stick around and listen to me. I'm going to try my best. Uh, this book is a brick. And this book is expensive, too. It's like a $25 book. And uh, when I bought it, I kept hearing about this everywhere, from Reddit to YouTube. I kept hearing about this all the time. I can't wait to finally dig into the content, because if it's a book I haven't read, probably you guys feel the same way. I don't know. I try to avoid it. If it's a movie I haven't seen yet or a movie I really want to see, like No Way Home, the Spider-Man movie or something, I avoid everything said about it because I want to really go in and experience it for the first time. If I hear somebody say it's a bad movie or a good movie or a bad book or a good book, that's fine. I don't have an issue with that. But going into it, I like to not know really much of anything. Uh, House of Leaves has one of those covers that I hate. Not the cover's design, but this thing. This thing where the cover doesn't come over the entire front. This is not my fault. The book comes out like this. And I hate that because it irritates this webbing in between my fingers when I read it, because it's a heavy book too. This book is sitting close with the appendi appendices, whatever they are. There's like three append appendixes to this. It's sitting about 700 pages, but the story itself I thought was closer to 630 pages. It's not. It's about probably co closer to about 550, somewhere in there. It flew by. Um, I had to slow down a little bit to read this. It took me about two weeks to read this book just because I was kind of reading my Bible and mixed in I was reading The Nutcracker by uh, Alexander Damas, which I recently did a review for. I was reading some Goosebumps. I was reviewing this or reading this at the same time. So it took me a little while to get through this. Plus, I had to slow down and read this because it's a very, like I said, complicated book. And as I explain the book, I hope that it'll make more sense. Um, where do I even start? Okay, let's imagine the found footage genre. Have you ever heard of the found footage genre? Things like Blair Witch Project or Cloverfield. Um, I'm a big fan of found footage movies. This is kind of like a faux documentary, kind of like that. Imagine you picked up a book about a uh, some kind of mysterious situation in the world or the eighth world wonder of some crazy house with a crazy situation with this family dealing with it. But it's not written like a novel. It's written like an actual documentation right that's what this book is like house of leaves is mainly focused as a faux documentary based around this footage of this movie called the navidson record that was released to the public um and people are kind of putting in their input a lot of this book and the documentary portion of it are focused on this man named will navidson his girlfriend slash partner she's not his wife they're not married but they have a couple of kids together chad and daisy <clears throat> They move into a new house in Virginia, and I live in Virginia, so I thought that was pretty cool. I wonder if the picture of the house in this book, like the ones on the spawn and stuff, I can't help but wonder if there are a house somewhere in Virginia. That'd be really cool if I could go find that, take pictures of myself being at that house. But anyway, um, they notice one day that a mysterious door shows up in their house that was not there when they got into this house. And when they open it, it's a small closet. And over time, they realize more and more this closet is getting, like, taller ceilings, and it's getting longer as a hallway, like it's turning from a closet into a hallway. And it's just this really bizarre thing. I had heard many people talking about how unsettling and creepy and scary this book actually is. And I'll tell you this, I'm not somebody who gets very scared by books. I love gory horror. Most of my re channel here is reviewing horror books. I love stuff like that. I love gory horror. But I like scary horror, too. I, I like that ethereal, beyond-the-cosmos terror of my existence, like H.P. Lovecraft focuses on. And if you love more of that kind of thing, this book is totally going to be down your whole rabbit hole for you of interest, because it's very Lovecrafty and probably more than anything I've ever read. I'll be honest with you, and I, I like some Lovecraft, man. Um, this book is freaky, <laughs> and it's, it's, it's a fun book because of that. Now, that main story, that faux documentary, is in one particular font. And then in the bottom, there's a footnote section that has a lot of references to other things and little references here and there by fake editors. Um, and that's pretty cool. But there's also another perspective we're kind of following throughout the book by a particular fellow, I cannot remember his name to save my life, Johnny. Johnny Truant, that's what it is, because I kept thinking truancy, like school truancy. Uh, Johnny Truant, um, who is a tattoo artist who finds this manuscript after he and his friend Lude find out a uh, an old man named Zampano, I think is what his name was, 
Zampano had this uh, this record here, this book on him about the Navidson record, the faux documentary that we're reading. Zampano had this documentary book thing with him, and throughout the book, you're reading footnotes at the bottom of the page, and sometimes page after page, from Johnny Truant commenting on certain sections or how it's affecting his life or how he's starting to have experiences that are creepy in his life based on what he's read in this book, maybe some things that are happening. He claims to see, uh, after a while, he claims to see some kind of beast in the corner of his eye and his peripheral that when he looks right at it, it seems like it's not there, but he feels like he's not alone a lot of the time. He starts having times missing and stuff. I'm not so invested in the Johnny Truant story. Let me be honest with you. That part's interesting, but God, he rambles. I mean, he goes on forever. One of the mentioned authors in this book that are brought up as a character is Stephen King. So is Stanley Kubrick. Uh, Stephen King is a very rambly author. <laughs> so as I read Johnny's portion, a lot of the time, it feels like Stephen King writing those parts, not with a personality, but more of like just how all over the place he is. Johnny can go from the creepy instances in his life that are currently happening to his entire engagement with somebody random about their sexual activity that you just don't care about, you don't need to know it. Um, he's obsessed with a stripper named Thumper, or nicknamed Thumper. And uh, all that stuff focused on Johnny just doesn't interest me. It doesn't. And honestly, by the end of the book, I feel like it doesn't amount to anything. However, the faux documentary about Will Navidson and the Navidson record, the film, are fascinating. I love it. I think it's fantastic. After a while, Will Navidson and his uh, family and some friends and people that they bring in decide to go on kind of a an exploration to investigate this hallway closet thing that's turning into a tunnel, basically, and into this great massive thing that the house shouldn't be able to contain. It is a fascinating read. It is so good. It's so enjoyable. Um, there are clear-cut things from this book that are stolen for other things nowadays. Um, I think there's a, a Kevin Bacon movie that came out in the last couple of years with Amanda Seyfried. Uh, it's called, I think it was You Should Have Left or something like that. It was from the guy who did um, <sighs> A Stir of Echoes. I love A Stir of Echoes, an amazing film. Not so great of Richard Matheson book, but an amazing flick. I really love that movie. It also has Kevin Bacon. But You Should Have Left or whatever that movie was called stole one of the greatest concepts from this book into that movie, and it sucked. Now, by the way, when it comes to the Johnny Truant footnotes, they also have that in a different font style as well, so you can kind of keep up with what you're reading compared to the faux documentary that Zampano had before he died. Um, in the back of the book, there's a lot of pictures and stuff that are collected for not only the case of the book, but also the counter cases from other people like critics and skeptics and stuff that think the, the whole situation in the Navidson record film itself are fake. That stuff's interesting. I really like that. Uh, the appendixes just go on forever, honestly. I browsed through a lot of that stuff, saw some of the sketches that were in there. That was pretty cool. Um, a lot of this Navidson record film I could picture in my head. And it's written in such a way it's not like a, it's not like a novel. Now, I will say this. One thing that I think is obnoxious, I used to be a very pretentious writer in the sense of I used to write verse poetry. It doesn't get more poetic, uh, more uh, hipster-esque than verse novels you know, and poetry novels and stuff like I used to write. Um, a lot of the time that ends up becoming wasted space in a book. You might have a page with one word on it, right? Yeah, I used to do that. This book has a lot of that. You might have a page that has one paragraph on it or in the middle of the page, you'll have like one line of wording or then you'll be turning the book different angles, like holding it this way or holding it upside down. So to try to read different portions of the book as you go along, because it's supposed to make you feel dizzy and lost because of the situation and the explorations of the closet that those characters in the faux documentary are experiencing. Um, let me say this, as obnoxious as it can be with that and how I had to slow down so much to really keep up with all the fast details that were flying through here, I had a blast. I got sucked into it. One thing I hate, I physically despise about this book is during the faux documentary parts with Will Navidson and the Will Navidson record. I don't like how we have so much commentary from these, I'm assuming fake critics by fake names and stuff from like Harvard and Yale and all this other garbage. We literally will have them focusing on things like circles and talking about things like that, like eternity and echoes and stuff like that. And those portions go on for page after page after page. And I had to skip a lot of that garbage because it didn't matter. It really honestly didn't matter. Some of it does come into play. Uh, there's a particular myth they talk about that comes into play that I do like. Um, 
A lot of it's junk and needs to be chopped out of the book. But by the time that you would take all those pages that have like one word or like a line of words across the middle of the page and nothing else, by the time that you would in your head visually smash all that into one regular looking book without all the pretentious all over the place stuff, um, it would probably be about a 350 page book, somewhere in there, maybe a little bit longer, close to 400, but about there in that ballpark, not very much longer than that. <clears throat> So the book has portions that fly by. There were times where I went by 30 pages because all the short paragraphs on each page and didn't even realize it, or the stuff I was skipping over that I did, I really honestly didn't need. The newspaper articles and stuff that had nothing to do with anything, I skipped over all that garbage too. Uh, one of the interesting things too is on the cover, you have the word house in blue. And throughout the book, every time you have the word house, either in English or any other language, they cover it in blue, and I don't know why. I don't know what the point of that is. Um, I don't think it was ever touched on, as far as I know, unless I missed something, but very interesting read. Really, really, really interesting read, and I really recommend it. If you happen to be a novel horror fan, you might want to check this out. It's an experience you won't have anywhere else, I can promise you that. Very spooky, very much will be something I remember the rest of my life. Um, I will not forget this. The way people talk about the Blair Witch Project when that came out before I was born or I guess I was born, but I hadn't really experienced it. I don't, I don't know. I don't, I'm not a big Blair Witch guy, but I love found footage as a subgenre of the horror genre. If you love that kind of thing, I think you'll appreciate this more than most people. But even if you don't like that, I think you'll appreciate this quite a bit, because it's very artistic, it's very well done, has a lot to say. Very good book. Very, very good book. Just a lot of stuff I think needs to be chopped out of here, or some stuff that I think is not as appealing. Uh, one of my personal favorite characters in the entire book is Tom, who happens to be Will Navidson's uh, brother. And he's a carpenter, he's a drug addict. I love Tom. I think his jokes and stuff are fun. I love the sections of the book where we get just his opinion on certain things, just him talking to himself. It's great. I love it. The book's explorations, I love that stuff too, of the house itself. It just got to me in a way that most things don't. And a lot of people say those very same phrasings when it comes to something like Lovecraft's work. So if you feel that way about Lovecraft, you need to read House of Leaves. It's a genius read. It's so well done, so well portrayed, so well executed in most ways. Um, the ending is kind of just, um, it just kind of ends. You know, I wasn't prepared for this to end where it ended. I expected another 100 pages, and I was thinking the whole time I was reading this, so how are they going to stretch this out another 100 pages? It turned out they didn't. It ended at like 550 pages or something. Anyway, House of Leaves by Mark Z. Danieluski. What did you think about it, guys? Have you read this book? Put your thoughts and comments down below. I would love to hear what people have to say about this one. It was a trippy read, dude. When it comes to the experience of the faux documentary, I loved that. But there's so much stuff in here, like the end, like the, the footnotes with um, Johnny Truant, that just don't appeal to me at all. I think they're a waste of space. If I ever reread this, I will probably just read the faux documentary portions, um, which will make the book fly by a lot faster. The Johnny Truant weird sexual explorations, it's, it's too much, way too much. Um, there's way too much detail put into that, so much wannabe poetic nonsense. <clears throat> If I had to rate the book on a five-star basis, I would easily give House of Leaves a four out of five stars. It's so close to being perfect. If they had a little bit more brevity, I, is that the word I want to use? If the editors were more bold to say, we're not including this, this, and this, it would be better as a project, in my opinion. Um, think of the most pretentious filmmaker you could have, like Nicholas Winning Refn, and imagine them doing something just slightly flawed. Like The Neon Demon is a great example. I'm, not, I'm a huge Winning Refn fan. Uh, Neon Demon, I think, is a very slow, boring movie until the ending. Uh, it's one of his few films I feel that way about. I love most of his movies, if not all of his movies, outside of the Neon Demon. <clears throat> That's what this feels like to me. It's a flawed, almost masterpiece, you know? House of Leaves is great. I recommend it highly. If you haven't read this book, you're missing out. Big time. You're missing out. It's so good. Anyway, what are your thoughts? Put them down below once again. Thank you for watching. Four out of five stars for me. God bless you. Goodbye.